Hey everybody, I'll start about 15 seconds early, why not? Um, I hope everybody's having a good time in Portland. For those of you who are also from out of town like me, um, this, this town is just awesome. Um, I think the conference uh, contacted Bill Scott to talk about the node uh, transformation at PayPal. He was unavailable, so he passed it along to my manager, uh, Trevor Livingston, who also was unavailable. Uh, who passed it along to me. So I am, I'm the third choice, but I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. Uh, and I think, I think I'm probably appreciating uh, the conference in the town more than they would have anyhow. Uh, so let me start out with just a couple of things I threw in here at the last minute. Things to do in Portland. Buy an umbrella. That's the first thing I did. Um, I was soaked. Uh, that's what I heard, but I saw a lot of umbrellas around here, so I guess there's a lot of tourists in this area, right? So, you know. So, uh, acknowledge bread. Bread apparently is very important uh, in Portland culture for those on a uh, low gluten diet. That's, that's unfortunate. Uh, so I came across the Mad Greek Deli last night and had this sandwich that I, I almost cried. I almost cried on the sandwich. It was really good. Anything with french fries inside it is good. Uh, liquid bread. I went to the Hungry Tiger, which is near where I'm staying, and um, everybody was drinking Rainier out of a can, so I did as well. I still looked like a tourist, but I was at least doing something right. Uh, and then um, today at lunchtime, I went to Addie's, which is nearby, and that was awesome. So it's just uh, bread, 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 bread in Portland. And uh, again, it's, it's just an awesome, awesome place to be. Uh, if you're here visiting, don't forget before you leave, um, after treating yourself to all these wonderful things, if you're doing it like I am, buy something for your you know, uh, wife or husband uh, and get something for your kids. Um, my three-year-old made me promise. He said, Daddy, buy me something with wheels. I said, okay, with wheels. And then he said, and a remote control. I said, I don't know about the remote control. But anyway, uh, so I've been at PayPal since 2007. Um, I'm a full stack um, engineer, I guess I'd call myself at this point. Uh, I'm moving from the front to the back. So when I got there in 2007, I was specifically doing uh, web development, and now I'm uh, much more focused on the back end in uh, Node.js and JavaScript. And I'm on the, uh, the, the infrastructure team, we call it, which is basically the team that uh, builds and maintains the, uh, the infrastructure modules for other teams at PayPal to build web applications. Uh, so my team manages the internal stuff, and also uh, some of the, the open source uh, modules that you may be familiar with, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and I'm not an architect. I think it was somewhere listed that I am one. Um, are there any architects in the room? Okay, I'll save my architect joke then. Uh, the the kind of high, uh, high level outline of Node.js and PayPal was in 2012, uh, some folks migrated over from Netflix and introduced it as a prototyping platform where we could build our, our sort of front-end assets in Node.js type stuff like Require.js uh, for dependencies, uh, Dust for templating, um, and uh, Less for CSS, and then we would migrate it over to our Java application. So we were using Node.js to sort of build out these high-definition prototypes. Um, and then uh, we did a bake-off um, between a team that was developing a feature in Java and a smaller team that was developing the same feature in Node.js. And the result of that was that basically the same product was built in less time with less people. Uh, so that was kind of the forcing function that said, hey, let's, let's you know, migrate over uh, to Node.js for our web applications. Um, I think that, that's greatly simplifying it, but sort of that story has been told in other presentations that can be found probably on YouTube, et cetera. Um, and then in uh, the first half of 2013, the Kraken.js uh, Express wrapper was open sourced, and um, uh, there's people that are obviously using it internally at PayPal, and we get a lot of contact from people outside of PayPal as well as, as contributors, uh, you know, filing issues and that sort of thing. So it feels like it's getting uh, pretty good traction. Uh, it's, uh, there's 3,600 GitHub stars or so, um, and in terms of the uh, the developers of PayPal, we've got several hundred uh, that are now Node.js developers. Um, and they're not all new, right? So we, we were a Java shop, and now in terms of the front end, we're, we're a Node.js shop, um, or front and mid tier. Uh, so if you do the math, you would see that some developers we, we uh, recruited in to do Node.js, but some we migrated over from being Java developers, which is an interesting story in itself. 
Uh, so at this point, we have 80 plus apps in production and, and uh, a lot of traffic is, is going across Node.js right now. Uh, so this is what change feels like. When you tell a large organization that you know, we're going we're gonna to start using another language, uh, you may feel panic. You may sense some, some discord and unease from certain elements in your developer population. Uh, so I'm not saying PayPal did everything right, but I'm just going to try and uh, give you my perspective on how we did deal with, with that change. Um, I would say that basically you need these three things to manage this sort of change. You need influencers, uh, you need experts slash mentors, and then you need a community. So uh, I alluded to people coming over from uh, Netflix and sort of bringing this technology to PayPal. Um, so Bill Scott, I would call probably the biggest influencer, he was brought in at the director level. And he had this idea to really use uh, Node.js and some of these core people he brought over with him as this forcing function to change the developer culture at PayPal. Um, the developer culture was kind of based around a large infrastructure org that built this Java framework that everybody used. It wasn't open source, it was, it was Spring based, um, but it was very, you know, PayPalized. Uh, if you wanted to have anything added to the framework, you would have to go through this large framework team. You'd have to wait, you know, till the next release, whatever alpha beta uh, test cycles there would be. So if you had a need in that product, it would be a long time until you actually saw it met, if you ever saw it met. Um, so that, that was kind of part of the, the culture that, that, want, that we wanted to change was, you know, we don't want to have to rely on this big infrastructure organization and we don't want to be dictated from them as to how we're going to build our products. Uh, and Bill came in and, and was really selling that at a fairly high level uh, in the organization. Um, at the same time, he brought in these, these experts uh, slash mentors, uh, probably I would say four engineers, uh, who really started to... Uh, use Node.js as, as a prototyping platform and they built this small uh, express based uh, framework for us to prototype in and then as we were using it as a prototype platform uh, they were quietly building out the rest of the infrastructure so that this uh, framework could you know talk to the to the all the other services and topology and basically integrate with with the production environment at PayPal um, and you know at that same time they were you know teaching product teams how to use it as a prototyping platform how to use express uh, basically, you know, sort of uh, mentoring uh, front-end developers like me in how to become full-stack developers. So they were creating, you know, more people that could, that could go and tell other people to do the same thing. So they were creating experts. Um, and that's hopefully what we're still doing now is, is taking a fairly uh, core team of people and making other people experts as well. Uh, and then the last thing uh, uh, of that is community, and that's basically, you know, all your developers. You can't really think of it as, you know, we're up on high and we're dictating this platform down to the developers and they just have to use it. Uh, it's, you know, we're a small team. We're a probably eight-person team that's doing this infrastructure organization for, uh, you know, seven to eight hundred uh, developers. So we can't answer every problem and we can't add features every time, uh, you know, somebody wants one. So we really need to build up the community to be able to answer questions for themselves uh, and solve you know, things for themselves. And then also to be a conduit so when we do hear of a solution from you know, some team over here, it makes its way to the other teams so that people aren't repeating these solutions. So guiding principles, uh, provide capabilities, not rails. Again, we're not trying to give uh, you know, the everything you know, plus the kitchen sink. We're just trying to say, here's, you know, here's this express wrapper. Uh, here's the basics of, of how you kind of connect to the PayPal infrastructure. How you build your web application is really up to you. Um, what you need to do that is really up to you to find that, either within PayPal or outside of it. Um, but again, we're just too small of an organization to solve everybody's problems, and I think at the end of the day, you don't get the kind of developers you want by saying you're going to solve everybody's problems. Uh, design for reuse and deprecation. Um, I think a good example of that is a misstep that we had in our CI process where we basically in our, in our uh, build script that packaged our applications, uh, we assumed everybody would use grunt. So kind of hard-coded in these build scripts was, you know, grunt build, grunt this, grunt that, grunt the other. 
uh, you know, we'll fast forward two years and nobody wants to use Grunt now. They want to use Gulp or they want to do whatever they want to do. So obviously what we should have done was say, okay, we're, we're going to use the NPM, you know, script commands instead. And that's what we're, you know, that's what we're doing now. But it was a little bit painful to kind of get to that place. Um, be clear about your process. So in terms of, uh, you know, our organization, we really are trying to operate like an open source organization within PayPal. Um, you know, how do we do code reviews? How do we do pull requests? When do we release um, software? How do we announce that we've released software? So we're, we're trying to be very clear about, you know, everybody should be on this particular Slack channel. This is where you're going to get the news of, of what's happening. And if you have questions, also be on that, that same Slack channel. Um, Promote standards. Uh, I don't see my notes here, but I, I'm going to paraphrase the joke that I had, which you've probably all heard, which is that standards are great. Every team should have a different version of standards kind of a thing. Um, and we, we're, we don't have a centralized standard. Uh, our infrastructure team does have a standard, and we recommend that all of the product teams also have standards. But it really, I think, is kind of up to a team to decide you know, what standard that is that, you know, that they're going to follow. Uh, and, you know, no, let me Google that for you. If somebody has that basic of a question, they're going to need to kind of go answer it for themselves. Okay, winning Node.js. But I don't want to use that. If nobody wants what you're making, then you need to kind of go back to the drawing board. Can I get that in Cornflower Blue? Uh, don't solve every problem. You really, you really need to be, you know, very focused and light. And uh, here's some uh, statistics. We took a little developer survey a while back, and th there's, no, there's no numbers along the y-axis. I apologize. But uh, basically, you can see that most, most developers at PayPal are pretty happy or very happy using Node.js. And uh, I think my manager put this little joke in here, probably Java fans, down there at the very left-hand side. Uh, do they feel like part of the community? We have a little work to do there. We'd like to move people more over to the right, obviously, of this. Um, See, there's NPM publish activity. Well, there's nothing on the x-axis. That's a good point. <laughs> and again, I kind of, I kind of copped these from my manager. Uh, so I think what, what he's trying to show here is that uh, we're publishing a lot of modules, both in open source and inner source. I think that the dark purple is our inner source module. So we have a, a NPM uh, uh, repository or, you know, NPM instance within PayPal itself, and that's represented by the, the purple there. There's nothing there. There we go. Okay. And then framework versus uh, community modules. Is this one going to take a while? Anyway, the point of this slide was to say that we're using uh, more uh, community modules than we are framework modules. So we're much more open source than we are inner source in terms of our usage. Oh, there it is. Okay, really quickly, regarding our Node.js technology, I alluded to Kraken, uh, which uh, boot, bootstraps Express. Uh, we have our dev tools, which are called uh, constructs, um, which is kind of like a, a watch task that'll, that'll just in time compile, you know, less or CSS or whatever, um, you know, less or SAS or whatever kind of files you might do during a build or be changing on the fly. Uh, Luska for security, which is sort of like Helmet, if you're familiar with that module. Uh, Confi and Metalware, which are my favorites, because you can use Confi almost anywhere. Uh, there's a lot of different um, solutions that are using Confi to do sort of JSON uh, plus environment awareness uh, plus shortstop handlers. I, I recommend you look into it if you're doing sort of environment-based configuration for anything. Uh, it's definitely a good standalone module. Uh, internally, there's uh, stuff that we have to do. We have to invoke our services. We have to log. We have to manage sessions, authentication. All this stuff. Um, so that's sort of the internal stuff that we don't release to the public, obviously. Um, our open source has helped align PayPal with principles of modern developers. Uh, this goes back to inner source again, where we're trying to get everybody within PayPal to behave as if they're open source developers, even if what they're developing is, is you know, proprietary and internal, which is a shift, because I think um, uh, traditionally PayPal was very siloed with people being very protective of the software that they wrote and, and really kind of guarding it and not letting other people see it, change it, and so forth. Uh, so what, what are our challenges? So there's people like me who have migrated from the front end to more of a full stack role. 
And that's a challenge because um, I, at least, do, do not have a, a computer science background. I came into web development from more of a design um, sort of path. Uh, so people like me, of which there are a lot at PayPal, have to kind of build up their DevOps knowledge and build up this other knowledge that other people who come from a CS background just sort of have and bring to the table. Um, so if, if you are like me and, or, you, or you have people who are you know, like me who are migrating that way, I think it's important to have those experts and mentors um, to, to bring them up to speed. Um, other sorts of people, uh, which is basically people that are coming to Node.js from another language possibly, and maybe they want to write as if they're still writing in that other language, whatever it might be. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, and keeping up with the Node community. Um, things go pretty fast, right? So things change rapidly. We, when we started three years ago, uh, Dust seemed like a great solution for templating. And we built our internationalization all around Dust. Uh, you know, fast forward three years, everybody wants to use Angular or, well, no. Two years ago, everybody wanted to use Angular. Now everybody wants to use React. Uh, you know, nobody, at least at PayPal, seems to want to touch Dust. It feels icky to them. So, you know, kind of buying, building something so heavily into Dust was, was kind of a mistake that we made as well, uh, which, which we've, you know, reversed. And actually, the community reversed it. It wasn't any in infrastructure um, initiative to do that. It was some enterprising teams who basically came up with the solutions themselves. And so, as an infrastructure org, uh, you know, it's kind of our duty to say, hey, that's great. Let's take that and promote it uh, to other parts of the organization. Uh, so I've alluded to this inner source idea. Uh, this is something that we're promoting from within PayPal, uh, where we want um, you know, both PayPal and other companies that are interested to try and operate as if they're an open source you know, group of people um, around how they you know, do code hygiene and pull requests and so forth. Uh, so I, I would definitely recommend you check out innersourcecommons.org. Um, so, okay, I wasn't sure if I would do this last or first, but uh, I brought these up here, and um, I didn't bring these with me. Uh, Denise Cooper, who is the head of our inner source office, left these for me at the concierge office, so I think she wanted me to juggle. But one of the things that she's doing is she's um, having, having us <laughs> learn how to juggle. So we're actually, every Tuesday, there's a group of people that gets together with, with a clown. He's not dressed up, but uh, he is a clown nonetheless. And learning how to juggle, and we're basically doing that to try and promote uh, these inner source uh, ideals. So the idea is you get people from different backgrounds together to learn something they've never done before, which is essentially how we want to do inner, inner source. We want people who haven't uh, you know, done it before uh, to do it. So, all right, let me just try something a little bit advanced. Don't be afraid to fail. There we go. <laughs> I didn't think I could do that. Okay. Who wants to see some rings? Here's some rings. All right, there you go. I learned that joke at the Renaissance Fair. Okay, that's it. If there's any questions, um, I, we got a couple of minutes. Questions? No? Nope. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, you mentioned React, are you guys also on board the Flux bandwagon? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not too dialed into what the Flux people or the React people are doing. They do have a channel in our, in our Node.js uh, Slack, and they're very active, but I'm not quite up to speed with what they're doing yet. There, I know there's some discussion about whether they should be using Flux or exactly what flavor they, of it they should be using. But if you give me your contact info, I can, I can get someone in touch with you. I'd love to hear at least one story about the job of them switching and like what sort of tricks you had to make that transition easier from the kingdom of nouns to anything else. Um, yeah, that, uh, that'd be a little bit anecdotal. So let me, let me talk with you separately about that. Okay, well, I'll juggle you out then. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I can do the rings here.